So Jennifer, pick up that box there on the table and look inside. Oh, come that's on. your curtain box. Oh, that is cute. See? With my perfect cookies? Exactly. And all these boxes are actually uh, prefab and you can buy them at craft stores. Okay. So they are made in the shapes of houses. Mm -hmm. Now the windows are very beautiful. So you have little windows cut out. Mine are made out of craft paper and some gold corrugated paper and you can buy it gold. Do you glue gun on the thing or on the thing? I do it on the object that's going to be glued and watch out for your fingers because hot glue is hot. No joke. Do you craft every Christmas? I craft every Christmas. I try to think of something. If it's not my card, it'll be my invitation to the party. Do you get obsessed and stay up all night doing it? All night. Because that's what I would do? Yeah. All Were night. I to craft, uh, I would stay up know, and do I, it all night. I did my embossed Christmas cards. And you did them yourself? Yeah, and they were really pretty. They looked like, you know, they looked like the finest embossed Seems cards. like you have a lot going on to be sitting around embossing Christmas cards. No, I become a fanatic. My Christmas presents when I was little and I would wrap them for my sisters and my family, I'm such a, a messy wrapper. But I got A for creativity. I would always go nuts and make them really kooky and creative and fun. I think children really get mesmerized by a beautiful Christmas. I agree. And I think they deserve a beautiful... Especially living in California, you have to create Christmas because it's not there automatically. I'm going to do the roof now. Don't be intimidated by my roof. This is called drawing a bead. You said you put the glue on the object. Well, no, on this part, it's because this is a little bent. I want okay. to make sure that the glue is... I've got to draw a bead. Okay, got it. And I need another one over here. My job when I was growing up was always to pass out the presents. I would wear a oh. Santa Claus hat, and uh, my family calls me puppy, so I would wear, I can't believe I just disclosed that. family out. calls you puppy? Mm-hmm. Oh, so why? I would wear this hat that said Santa's puppy, and I would, I was in charge. Are you the youngest? In the middle. The middle, and they called you puppy. What are your other sister's names? Um, Melissa is my eldest sister, and we called her sister. I don't know why. And my younger sister, Susanna, we had a lot of names for her. Punky, you know, baby. That's I don't cute. Know. But anyway, I'm my... is Martha. With Always. your mom being Martha, you were both always Big Martha, Martha? Oh, little Martha. Martha, I'm going to come up with a nickname just for you. Okay, I would like a nickname and not Marty, please. No, you're not a Marty. No, I was Marty. You might be Pumpkin. <laughs> You go pumpkin. pumpkin. No, you're not a pumpkin. But you know, that's what a nickname is. So now I'm gonna put my little roof on. Oh, this is looking so good. Look, Jennifer. Oh yeah, it is. That is really cute. And it looks tailored and nice. Perfect. I'm out of wax. Oh, here. So you, you have your little extra oh, sticks. More. And you just feed it right in? Right. Thanks, pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> I think I have a new nickname. Why is this so satisfying? That's what crafting is all about. Mm -hmm. It gives you a sense of self-satisfaction, of self-confidence, and you're left with something, hopefully, that's really pretty and useful and reusable. Look at this roof, everybody, look! What I really want to tell you, Jennifer, is that I love your enthusiasm, and I really like that you are building traditions for your family. You have and to you think about it. it. You, you, some traditions happen by accident, and those are really fun. Uh -huh. But some you have to actually think, what, what could we do that would be special that's just, just us? Yeah, I think it's very important. Look at that. See? Yeah, I'm not, not even sure. a crafter. But you did a fantastic job. You are a crafter. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. you are a crafter. So now we're just gilding. Like we gilded our cookies, we're gilding. I'm using an enamel paint. And I'm using rub and buff, antique gold rub and buff. And I'm using liquid leaf. Should it's I do every one of them or just more? Guess what, Jennifer? I can pick how I want. It's your house. It's starting to really make sense to me, this whole craft. It's starting craft. to look a lot like Christmas. I wish we could say. With Martha, I can sing, don't count me out. <laughs> yeah, Martha, we, we need wreaths. Wreaths, oh, I think I'm gonna do blue. These are beautiful, made out of little pieces of tinsel. Just put a little drop of hot glue. Look at this. Oh, I am cute. Oh, very beautiful. One little wreath on the door. I think so. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing crystals. This needs a painting. Top. Look, I love my house, and I love your house. Here it goes, stink. Okay. Oh, Martha, I have to go. Where are you I'm going? meeting Victor Garber for dinner. Oh, how lucky. Mm -hmm. Oh, please give he him my best. He said tell you hi. Okay. Oh, well. And uh, here, take at least one of these houses. Oh, well, he would be for... so angry if I showed up without Do you want to give that to Victor? Yes, I will. I'll send some to the girls okay. and, and have a very, very Merry Christmas, okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank Merry you. Christmas. Hi, everybody. Well, it is that time of year again to bedeck and bedazzle your home for the holidays. There's lots of safety tips to take into consideration when you're doing this kind of outdoor decoration with lights. Always use a fiberglass or wooden ladder, which will not conduct electricity. You will be much safer than if you're using a metal ladder. This is an indoor and outdoor wreath, but I will not use an indoor extension cord. I want to use a heavy duty outdoor extension cord like this and never attach these outdoor wires with nails or uh, staples. Use these cable ties. So this cord can now be hidden right behind this trellis. And now let me tell you a little bit about the garlands that we've put on the balustrades. The same rules apply. Never nail or staple your electric cords to your wood. It's much better to use something like a cable tie like this. How lucky to find this color to match the gray of the house. Put this to secure the lights and the garland to your stair posts. These are so easily removed too with just a snip of a scissor. And don't forget, very important, this is artificial. I use artificial because it stays green for the entire holiday season. Before you go to bed, turn out the lights, or you can use a timer like this that'll control the on and off of the lights. I'm back with the Baker's Dozen from Yale, and they're providing us with some holiday background music for today's takeaways. One for a one-of-a-kind handmade holiday gift, paper mache an ornament and tie it with a perfect bow. Two for a Christmas tree that's completely unique, decorate with a favorite theme that you are inspired by, like bears. And three, try something different this year. Build your own holiday tree with branches from your own backyard. Please welcome to the show my friend and event des uh, designer, David Mon. So nice to have you oh, here. It's great to be here. Wow. wow. This is so beautiful, David. Well, and I recognize so many of the elements, the beautiful, beautiful pine cones. Well, before we get there, oh, okay. I want okay. to talk, talk about the, the most important thing I started here, Martha, was to actually give some architecture to our tree first. So um, this is a simple artificial tree that's under here. And oh, what I pre -lit, did- A pre-lit, a pre-lit tree? Pre-lit tree. Yes. Um, and then what I did is we went out and we cut down some uh, simple laurel branches and we painted them silver and gold. That's our theme this time. And we just stuffed them into the tree to give us some architecture to later then hang our branches on. I also saved some clippings uh, from the fall of our boxwood. Ooh. And we just put some natural boxwood in to give it a, an so airy feeling. Real? Those are real? This is real, oh, yes. And just okay. simply put in the tree. So then the next element, once we've gotten this architecture in place, was these two main elements to give it sort of its fantasy and its magic. And it was this um, glittered baby's breath. It's really, really simple. You can buy it, it's inexpensive, oh, or you can make so it at home. it's beautiful, yeah. And it gives this magic, but the most important element was from my friends at Mountain Farm, which is this preserved maidenhair fern. And I thought of you when I saw this. So they it's just, just dry, so beautiful. They just dry maidenhair? It is. Oh. It's maidenhair fern that's dried and then dyed. So now we have our architecture. Um, how many ornaments do you think are on this tree? Oh, probably about, I mean, which kind of ornaments, like this? Ornaments, yes. Oh, I would say maybe 100. 23. Really? There are only 23 elements, and that's really what I want to talk about today, because it's, it, once you have a tree Including that has- Including the pine cones? That's exactly right. Well, not, not no. the rose cones, but the actual ornaments. Oh, okay. So once we've gotten our architecture, then I went back and put in some very, very specific elements, and people are often daunted when you don't have enough ornaments. Um, so we started with taking these little paper leaves we made. It's plain flat cray I paper love that. that we cut out an, uh, an ivy, the holly and the ivy shape, and then it's just writ, colors of writ dye that we've uh, then dyed them with. And then Martha, I went to use this. People ask me, how did I make this? Rose um, cone. It's really God. Yeah, uh, the cedar rose cone. You know, it only comes from three places in the world: India, northern Florida, and northern California. 
And this is from a friend of mine, Peggy, in Northern uh, California, Peggy's Pine Cones. Have you, anybody and, in the audience seen these little rose cones? They really do look like roses. And they're so magical. Oh, they so we've are. taken some of them and then, this is just a very simple one with a ribbon yeah. on it. And then we've taken smaller ones and made them into a ball. And, uh, and then decorated again with our maiden hair and our gold. So I want to tell you also then, this is the ornament I want to talk to you about today we're going to make. This is an old-fashioned so paper mache. Okay. Uh, before we leave, Martha, one thing yeah. I wanted to show you was the, the, the tree skirt. I wanted the tree to look like it's just resting on a cloud. And this is just batting that we put some Christmas lights on top of it. And it's the old-fashioned uh, angel hair, yeah. which was fiberglass. Now it's made a little bit safer with spun glass, but it's still, you may want to be careful if you have little kids Don't around. eat it. Packing holiday gifts to send to loved ones can be a daunting task, but a wrap and ship station somewhere in your home can help you conquer the clutter and get those gifts shipped out just in time for Christmas. We have a pinup board here with a ribbon rack scissors of all sorts ready to use, waxed twines to wrap the presents with, and different types of tags and embellishments for presents. And underneath all the boxes that you need for shipping and many other supplies on the bottom shelf. And of course, don't forget your gift wrap, just in a nice little tin garbage pail like that. They look great and they're handy. They're right there for you. And I have a tip for you, which I think is so clever. Once you wrap a beautiful present and make a beautiful bow and embellish it with some beautiful glittery twigs like that, how do you send it without crushing that bow? Take a strip of corrugated cardboard, just cut up an old box and make a round that's large enough to go around your bow. And this is about a little more than an inch high. When you close the box, the bow is entirely protected. I call this my bow good thing. Tape your box shut and ship. If you're looking for a holiday gift to keep the kids busy over a long winter break, a personalized craft bag is the answer, filled, of course, with lots of craft goodies. Just print out the child's initial. This is D for my little friend, Daisy. Now I'm using decoupage. This is a fantastic decoupage glue to coat the entire letter. And I've cut this out with a circle cutter so it's a perfect circle. Just make sure it's all evenly coated and then just carefully put it down where you want it on the bag. Let this dry. If there's any glue sticking out anywhere, just carefully pick it up with a Q-tip. And the next step is to use a sponge and a little brush and really impregnate the paper with water. What you're transferring to the bag is just the red ink. And this is a wonderful process. And as this paper softens, it will rub away. And you can use a little brush like this to rub it. See how the paper is dissolving, emerging a monogram. It took about 24 hours for the letter to dry very well on the bag. And if you want a perfect transfer, that length of time is important. So this is looking absolutely perfect. So here we have a D on one side, a D on the other side, and the bag is ready to fill and give. Now, what should go in the bag first? How about some wonderful punches and a wonderful pad of creative paper? Have to have a crafts book, crafts for kids. Oh, how about some glitter? Our 24 pack, some wonderful decoupage. Pom-pom making tools, yarn to make the pom-poms. And to finish off our gift, some crafting kits for Daisy. I know she's going to love the bag and the contents of the bag. Oh, I love this too. Excellent. This year I've decided to make Franny and Sharky the subject of my Christmas card. To make a card that looks like this, look how beautiful. You need several really good tools. And in addition to tools, you'll need a really good camera. And I've just started using this Nikon D3200, which has an extraordinarily good flash, as well as good daylight capabilities. So uh, remember, a good camera is very, very important. To make this beautiful sparkly uh, rim around the photo, 
Uh, we're using a new tool, which we have created at Martha Stewart Living, and this is called a circle punch. So I'm gonna use some of our glitter paper. This is very nice glitter paper, and we are going to uh, place the paper over the cutter, making sure that there will be plenty of space for it to cut a perfect circle. And then this gets put right back, and then this, the cutter, and now just press evenly down on the cutter, and there. Now, to turn, just turn the little knob, one turn, and affix the cutter again, and another press. There. So that is starting to make your circle. And so now the magic. Take the cutter off, take the little turning mechanism off, and there you have a wonderful circle cut. We have to cut the pictures. To make sure that this doesn't move, put a little bit of masking tape on the corners. You don't want it sliding when you're doing your circle cut. And then position the center of the circle cutter in where you want the circle to be. And now get this little sharp knife cutter right into the correct hole and take it around. You can go around twice if you'd like to make sure. And remember, always cut on a cutting surface. This is one of those self-healing cutting boards, and it works so well. And so here you have Francesca and Sharky, very beautifully cut for the card. I love how that works. So now this is going to be taped right onto the glittered paper. You can use this magic double stick tape, put plenty on so it stays, and put this right on your glittered cutout. And then tie to a charming piece of brown craft paper. So now here, this is your card. You can write a message on the back if you like. Uh, and you can put this in an envelope and send it. And then when you take it out of the envelope, you can untie the card and have an ornament to hang on your tree. I love this idea so much. I wanted to show you how you can give a gift card in a very special little package that's very easy to make out of felt. We have a template at MarthaStewart.com. This is the template. It makes a perfect size holder for one of these very valuable gift cards from Starbucks. I think they're very pretty. So here's our template. Cut a piece of felt that will take the template like that. Use a little bit of double stick tape to apply the template right onto the felt. So you just put it on like that and let it sit right on the felt. Cut it out neatly. You have it like this. Have an iron handy. Take off your paper. Fold in the edges like this, and using a pressing cloth, steam the folds carefully. A little surge of steam does help. So you see what we're making is a little envelope for the gift card. Now you could sew this if you want, but there's no need because there's something called Fabri-Tac. It's like a glue specifically for fabrics, and it works really, really well. There. Once dry, put a neat little, oh, I like these pearl buttons, they're so pretty, and sew that right onto the top flap using a piece of butcher's twine, which comes in many different colors. So there, once or twice around is perfect. Put your gift card right in the little pouch and wrap it up like this. Go around and around and finish it off like that. Now, wouldn't you, coffee drinker, like one of these? And look, you can get a very charming cup and you can put one gift card there and another one there. It's a great gift and a very pretty presentation. This year, the theme is woodland animals. Look at these cute stockings. A pretty reindeer, a bear, you can choose whatever uh, templates you want for the animals. Uh, print it out and cut it 
neatly with a sharp scissor just along the outline. So once you get the entire bear cut out on a piece of styrofoam like this, you'll need a felting needle. These are available at sewing notion stores and also at craft stores. This needle has lots of little barbs along the sharp, sharp point, which push this um, wool right down into the felt. We want to nose right at the tip of the head here. So our bear is done. Now the stocking itself, you have three layers. You have the red heavy felt stocking, a top layer like this that's just cut plain. The red is pinked and then you have a back portion of the stocking. And you're going to have this part for filling. And just stitch this all the way around about oh, three quarters of an inch from the edge on your sewing machine. You can also do this by hand. For the cuff, cut a piece of felt that fits onto the top layer and one for the back. And I pink the edge and then to make it even more special, you can use this fabric punch and make a beautiful design like that. I, I think this is, just makes it look really special. And uh, working on a cutting surface, you can just use your punch. So all of this, this is just sewn right onto the stocking with the, with the machine. And then you can apply with Fabri-Tac, that magic glue, your bear right to the front of the stocking. Oh, and don't forget to put a little hanger here. Uh, just uh, catch that with your sewing machine. And so again, a little bead of glue will hold this animal in place. And there you have a very, very charming stocking. And what to put in the stockings? A yo-yo with light and sound. That's a lot of fun. How about some jacks? Again, very old fashioned, but lots of fun to play. And uh, oh, a predictor pen. Very fun little uh, games can be played with a predictor pen. And of course, some special candies for kids. Ooh, chocolate in green foil. And if it's for your girlfriend, well, how about a really nice piece of jewelry? And for the husband, well, how about a pair of socks or a piece of coal? Once filled, hang your stockings with joy. Happy holidays. <laughs> Everybody loves getting a gift card to their favorite store. And I'm working with Kristen St. Clair, and we have made a gift card tree. And all of these hold a gift card. And these are so easy to make if you use really beautiful paper. We have all different kinds of Christmas craft paper. You can see all on the Glitter. tree. Glitter. Glitter papers. Seasonal. Pretty yeah. pattern paper. So yeah. this is actually a great little size. We have like the postcard size paper, which works great for these because you're not wasting, you're cutting oh, a big okay. circle out. So we're doing a four and a quarter inch circle. And all I'm doing is going to hold down the round of the circle and cut out my circle out now of the Now make paper. sure you use a cutting surface, a special cutting surface. Mm -hmm. Do not do this on your mahogany dining room table. No. And, um, and then we're gonna do the same thing with a piece of glitter paper. But look, look at this, the perfect circle. It would take you a long time to cut it with scissors and you never get it. It would never it. be perfect. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be perfect at all. Right. And then the glitter paper, always put the glitter face down. Uh, otherwise you're gonna start dulling your little sharp knife. And if it does get dull, there are extra blades They're right in inside. The, right in the back yes. side, right, yep. for storage. Yep. Oh, I love this, it's mm -hmm. so, so handy. So what I have here is we have a template that you can download, and it has a slit in it. We're and at MarthaStewart.com? Yes, okay. and that has a slit so that we, we're gonna cut out so that we can insert the gift card. So you wanna, so what, you wanna cut the slit on the, on the pattern paper? On the paper. pattern paper, okay. so we're just gonna line that up, and I have my ruler here and a craft knife. And you can just cut, follow that line. Not any old craft knot, knife. Knife the Martha not Stewart. Not any old ruler. Mm -mm. All these supplies are really great and look so beautiful together. So Perfectly. you cut your the slit out and then I'm just gonna take a piece of double stick tape and right above the slit on the patterned paper, I'm just gonna put a little piece of double stick okay. just to adhere it okay. to the glitter. That way those two I can line up just like that. 
and then I'm going to place my template back over. But only at the top because you're oh, going to be sliding. Exactly. You don't do it on the bottom half because... Because then you won't be able to get the gift card in. And we want to get our gift card in. So then you can just line up that slit again on there. And then we're going to use our screw punch. You can try to get through with a needle, but this is going to make it a lot easier. So you okay. can just go around and screw punch the holes. Look how this looks up close. You can see the little white stitches all the way mm -hmm. around. It really makes it a lot more special. So the ornament looks fantastic. I just love how the gift card looks slid into the little slot, uh, hang it on a tree. I like putting a tree like this right by my front door and all of these are going to have the names of the recipients right on. So as they leave, they take their present. I think this is a really great idea and a welcome gift. Do you have any idea what this gorgeous wreath is made out of? I have one hanging in my window behind me, and I'm going to make one for every window in my kitchen. But do you know what it's made of? If not, think coffee. Did you have your coffee this morning? You may have used one of these brown papers. Uh, this is a coffee filter wreath, and it is so much fun to make, and uh, it makes me smile because it really is gorgeous. And uh, if you uh, tie a ribbon around this and hang it on a door in a window, uh, you will have a very, very beautiful, beautiful looking wreath, and it's very easy to do. Start with a uh, straw wreath form. This is good. It's a good thing to affix the uh, coffee filters onto. And fold before you start these coffee filters. This is the uh, brown paper commonly available coffee filter out of unbleached paper. Uh, there are a hundred to a pack. You'll need two packs for a 12 inch wreath form. And, uh, and you'll need a lot of glue sticks and a little glue gun like this. And basically what you do is put some glue right on the back like that and start layering. Get a little bit of the glue onto the form and a little bit of glue onto the um, previous um, paper. When you finish this top, then you can go on the inside and then you can do another on the outside. Not, not difficult at all. Find a really gorgeous ribbon. And do you save your ribbon year to year? This is a good tip. My daughter unwraps all her presents irons the ribbons, rolls them up nice and tight, and puts them away for uh, re-wrapping. Re-wrapping is a lot better than re-gifting. And just take the ribbon like this, create a little loop, and run your ribbon through it. You can go one ribbon one way, and one ribbon the other way. And once you get the ribbon on, it's ready to hang on a window or a door. This is a charming wreath and easy to make. Every year I try to come up with a simple, elegant theme for my packaging. This year it's all about glittered pine cones. And I'm working fast and furious with Kristen St. Clair to create packages that look like this. Very simple, mm -hmm. but very elegant. So let's do the pine cones first. Yes, Kristen. so as you can see, I have a pine cone and I just took some floral wire and I'm just gonna twist it around the pine cone. And, and then we have our brown floral tape, which I we love. love which is that, that it comes in that brown. That nice waxy tape. Yes. And all I'm gonna do is just to hide that wire. We're just gonna wrap that around. So twist like that. So twist like that, it tears off really easily. Have our little wire snippers if we need to trim any of that wire. And then we are ready to glitter this pine cone. And so a little cluster of these, once glittered, will look very pretty Beautiful. on any package. Exactly. So we are just using a white glue, a Martha Stewart glittering glue. And you just paint it. And what I like to do is paint the whole back. And then you can just take your paintbrush and kind of go along the edge of the pine cone just to get the edges. So, so what I've done here is I picked a little palette for each of us. And work, I'm going to use work over. A, the glittering tray. Right. Oh, that's a beautiful pinkish Isn't bronze. Isn't that beautiful? So once all your pine cones are glittered, then you can add other things too to the little cluster. I'm using just uh, some very nice tinsel. Mm -hmm. Make a little ball mm -hmm. and just snip this with the wire snips. I'm using this bullion. I love that stuff. This, is, this comes in this coil and all you have to do is pull it apart like this and ball it up. Take and I just twisted those pine cones together and then you can just add your little embellishments. 
course, always put tissue paper inside the box. And this is just a mailing box. You could actually mail in this box mm -hmm. if you wanted to. And you can tape it shut. You don't need anything really special because you have this beautiful top part. True. Now make sure you get it on nice and straight. Mm -hmm. All the way around the box. And then red wax twine would look really nice. Tie that right on the box. You could even tape it on the box mm -hmm. if you want to make it very secure. And there, that looks so utterly gorgeous, I think. I think so too. This is a really beautiful present that anyone would be happy to receive. And remember, the wrapping is as nice as the gift inside. Today, we're going to make some very simple but extremely charming gingerbread cottages using the ubiquitous graham cracker. Exactly, and How everything nice. you use to decorate it is stuff that you could find at the supermarket. And some royal icing. Yes, I do have a piping bag, but with so many pipers piping, um, <laughs> it's nice to use these reclosable yeah. plastic bags, but right. that's something you could do ahead before the party. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut your pieces. You need four graham crackers, and I use a serrated knife, and because they're kind of brittle, you just go at it very lightly. You use almost no like downward pressure. You just lightly saw. Just hold it kind of securely. And if it breaks, eat it and cut another one. Exactly. Split one in half for the sides of the house, and then you'll split another one in half for the roof. So if you're ready as soon as you have your two peaked pieces and your four squares. Okay. Now we're gonna get ready to glue it together with our royal icing. So I'm just gonna snap a little bit off. You want it a little bit thicker than for making cookies. You know how it's like a flowy texture. This is just a bit thinner than toothpaste because okay. you want it to be strong glue. Okay. Now, take this piece of cardboard that we've pre-cut. You could use a paper plate, too. This is gonna be our base? Uh-huh. Oh, all right. It makes it even stronger to be glued to something. I'm gonna start with the peaked piece. Now, pipe along the bottom. And, you know, you could be pretty generous. Yeah, okay. Because it's stronger. The more you put all on right. there, the stronger it is. And now, when you put your first piece down, to support it while you're getting your other piece, you could take a spice jar, and just lean it against the spice jar. Yes. And now we're gonna go for one other piece for the side of the house. Pipe on the inside of the cracker and along the bottom. After you have three sides, you don't need the spice jar anymore. So we're gonna let that dry. Let's set that aside. Okay, this is my favorite part. Tiling. Tiling the roof. Pipe on some royal icing, and then I tile my roof. There's, we have all these supplies for tiling. And then I let that dry, and then I glue the roof on. This is the part the kids love. I want to eat one of these. I know, they're yummy, go for it. Mm, oh, they're so sour. <laughs> I've never had that. So now that the roof is all dry, we can just glue it on too. Exactly. Hmm, it's so cute. Aren't they so cute and fun? Yes. And if you make a bunch of them, it makes a really cute centerpiece down your table. And so I have a, no worries, I have a hole here, which is fine, because you can fill it with royal and cover it with yeah, more candy, so, sure. so that's my roof ready to okay, go. My roof is ready Just too. Let, let's let that dry. Okay. The peppermint balls make really cute snowmen. You I see, see over and you here. See the sled? And look, the sled is the cutest thing I ever Isn't saw. That fun? Yes. And then you could do a graham cracker door and glue it on. You know, make a doorknob with your red hots. And all the little hints and tips from the master of gingerbread <laughs> craft, Jody Levine. My signature look this year is very simple and very chic, I think, with just the right touch of sparkle. Brown paper, mylar, and bells. I think it's very pretty. And we have a fantastic fringing tool to show you. This is mylar tissue paper. Fold this in half lengthwise. What you wanna make sure you don't do is cut through the fold. The fold is going to hold the fringe together. And then you just, put your mylar right into this little contraption and start at the half inch line and just cut up like that. And you're fringing this beautiful shiny paper so quickly and easily. Take that fringed mylar, and I have a piece all done, and scrunch it up right down the middle. And once you get it all scrunched up, just twist. And if you want to make a little loop, which makes it very easy to affix to a gift, you can use a pen like this and hold it with one of these great bulldog clips. I love these bulldog clips. And just put it right here. So it's holding it in place. And then take your ribbon 
and tie right under the pen. There. And now release the clip, remove the pen, and you have a perfect ring and a perfect fringed tassel. Add a little jingle jangle to your little sparkle. And on a bag like this, you can even add your gift tag. Special creative gift wrapping are really fun to make. Happy wrapping and happy holidays to you. Does everyone have eggnog or champagne? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Excellent. What should we sing first? We wish you a Merry Christmas. Excellent. Sure. Carte blanche. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. So bring Creating sophisticated holiday decorations is really very easy and takes only a few simple steps using very few materials. This beautiful garland that you see behind me on the mantelpiece is made from shatterproof ornaments from the Martha Stewart Living Jingle Bright collection. To start, you have to measure your mantelpiece and swag a measuring tape to see how long a garland you actually need uh, because there's no reason to make it longer than necessary. And uh, this little washer tightly placed on the end of the wire will be your hanger. This will go onto one of these clear command hooks. There you have your end, and then just start threading your ornaments. The way the ornaments are arranged in the package is very, very nice. See how nicely they line up? I love how it looks. And when you're finished, put another washer on this end, and then you have your garland. And you can make a jabot to punctuate the garland. To make this hanging accent, make a small hole in the bottom of an ornament using a drill. Using two feet of 24 gauge wire, thread it through the loop of the second ornament. Twist the ends together and push through both holes of the first ornament. Then untwist the wire and put the cap back on. Leaving a length of three to four inches above the top of the ornament, create another loop. Hang the jabot on the same hooks that hold the garland in place. Very easy, very beautiful. It looks like it was done by a professional. You. Mark, thank you so much for, for really editing all these things so that everybody can see what's good and what's uh, well, appropriate. From the pet's point of view, they're all good. Now, do all Anything these, we have here is good. Now, do all these pets play with toys? Well, pets don't play with toys. <laughs> toys act differently with pets because the toy has to be thought of as environmental enrichment. That's so, the real word. So that's not really a toy. That is a, a bird that's going to be killed by a cat. Well, no, not like that. See, <laughs> animals grow up and that's they experience random events. Yes. Animals have to look for food. Animals have to experience their environment. They can't do that when we keep them as pets. So the toys that we give our animals are nowadays used to make them experience random events. For cats, this is my favorite toy. Oh. This is called the Panic Mouse 360. And oh. even when it doesn't do anything. Now you don't think that cat is trying to kill that thing? Well, the oh, panic mouse, yes watch, is. watch what I, when you push the button, yeah. the panic mouse will actually move the mouse in random oh. directions, the way it would actually move in nature. Oh. And this is my favorite cat toy, the Panic Mouse but, 360. It's made by Panic Mouse Incorporated, and over 750,000 of oh. them have been sold. 750,000? Yeah, when I I need, I need one in every room. My cats have to be doing this. When I do a TV uh, show cats. with cats, I always use this to keep them entertained. And you can either let it run all day like this, or it has a timer, so it can go on and off oh. randomly. Oh, excellent. And that's what makes the animal's Look, environment killing. enriching. He doesn't that know he's cat killing. Is, yeah, of course he knows he's killing. He is squeezing. She, she, she. The tortoises she is, are always girls. Oh, they are? Oh, yes, they have yes, three colors, so they always are. So. She's, I mean, she'll do that for hours. Yep, yeah, she is killing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Harry! See, Harry, 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 Harry took offense I took, oh, we took a headbutt. Okay. And thanks to Panic Mouse Incorporated, everyone in the audience is going home with a Panic Mouse. <laughs> now you'll have one in yes. your house. Yes. <laughs> so make sure you give it to, if you don't have a cat, give it to someone who does. Oh my gosh. Oh, beautiful cat. Okay, now, Mark, 
This is so fun. Isn't this I, cute? I know this product very well. We have an assortment of items for your dog from Martha Stewart Pets, sold exclusively at PetSmart. And my dogs love this bed. Each dog has a, its own bed, of course. Of course. <laughs> Francesca, Sharky, and GK has the larger version. And they, they use them. Well, Tintin wants this one. Tintin, you look so cute. Well, Tintin looks good in this blue, too. Yes, of course. Yeah, this, they're very special colors. Comes in blue and brown, and uh, it's very soft and comfy. And the cover is washable. And the cushion is also washable. If the dog yes. shoes on it, it's safe too. Yeah. And here's something great. All the beds are 20% off during December. So you should run over to PetSmart and get that. And what dog lover doesn't love a new toy or two or three? Here are all these great toys. They make great stocking stuffers. My dogs love these squeaky toys. These are all over the house, Mark. All over. Let's see if Tintin likes it. Uh, Tintin's a little afraid. There. Well, if you have four pounds in this big place, you'd be afraid too. Oh, that's a beautiful little dog. Here, here's another one. Oh, this is the moose. Moose is the name Bullwinkle. <laughs> oh my gosh, and we have live. And uh, the grooming tote is also. Is, is on. <laughs> she loves it. This is Coral Ann, everyone. And Coral Ann is so happy today. Coral Ann, you're a beautiful dog, a beautiful bird. Um, <laughs> And, and this tote bag uh, full of um, wonderful grooming tools is wonderful for you and your pet. And uh, it keeps everything handy and safe. Look at the and, grip you designed on this. It feels so comfortable. Oh, it's, it is comfortable. It is. And uh, I, I guess we could use this on our little beautiful tin tin. You can oh, use it on bunnies, too. Yes, we could. Now, these tools are multi-purpose, and they are very useful and very safe and very good. And look at the scissors. Yeah. Yep. I yep. mean, look at that. Not this too is sharp. Perfect. Yeah, those, you got are, the little, those are thinning, thinning shears. You have, the, the, you have the, the guard on it. Everything is so crafted, stainless this is, steel. This is great for long-haired cats, too, this one. It's very nice, and it's not too prickly. But, uh, and this is a nice washing mitt. Oh, and you're an expert on collars. I am, I am. I want them to be comfortable and nothing to be irritating around the neck. I wore them myself. I know, when, when, you're, when you're walking down the street with- I did, I wore them. When you're walking down the street with Martha and she sees a dog, she stops and she walks up to the dog, doesn't matter who owns it, to see if the collar is, is just the right- Right, the, right tension. Tension. Yeah. Because I, and, and you go like, eek! I know, if it's too tight, I always loosen it, don't I? You always do it, and I that's do. why you, I go like this, eek, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> well, we just couldn't decide what to send everyone in the audience home with, so PetSmart, yeah, <laughs> PetSmart is giving everyone in the audience a $25 uh, gift card so that you can do the choosing. And there's a wonderful new PetSmart right um, around the corner in New York City on uh, Bleecker Street and Broadway, so after the show, you can all go down and buy your pet gifts. Okay, so now what's this, Mark? These oh. are guinea pigs oh. and bunnies, and this is the Nut Not Nibbler, made by oh. Super Pet. And this is a great toy for rabbits and guinea pigs oh, and rats look. and chinchillas. See, you can, it, it comes with a walnut inside, but I like to also stick pieces of celery or carrots, and as the guinea pig or rabbit is trying to get the treats out, it's chewing on the wood. This has been Super Pet's number one best-selling rabbit toy for five years. Boy, so this keeps them from getting bored in their little exactly. rabbit Exactly, and the wood is Ooh. all natural. It's dyed with vegetable dye, so chewing on the wood uh. not only keeps the animal busy, but it also keeps their teeth from getting too long. Huh, so that's are, a problem that we have with those guinea are really pigs great. and rabbits and, and other rodent Super pets. Pet is giving all of you a nut knock, not nut, nut knock, knock, nibbler. Nib, nib, not knock, nibbler. <laughs> 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 